Welcome to the Lounge Lizards podcast. It's so good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. My name is Gizmo. Tonight, I'm joined by Rooster, Pooba, Senator, Grinder, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke some cigars, drink scotch, talk about life, and have some laughs. So take this as your formal invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a Cuban cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you a formal lizard rating. We'll also chat about a variety of other things for the next hour. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we light up the Partagas Maduro One. Would you guys call this a Robusto? 52 ring gauge by 5.1 yeah. inches long? Double Toro. <laughs> Double Toro. <laughs> uh, this is a pretty rare stick. I mean, it, it's. I would argue that this is harder to find than Lusitanius, Salomonis. Are you serious? I think so. Well, that's not good news. I think this is a very hard stick to find. Can uh, I have him back, is please? Is this aged? Is this... I want him back. <laughs> is this aged? These are aged. Do you know what year? I'll check right now. Um, they were Wait. originally released in 2015. There's the Maduro number two and then Maduro number three. We have the Maduro number one. So, so good. cold draw and the, and the light. What, what were you guys getting? Chocolate. Chocolate. I'll be, on, I, I'll be honest. Like my, so I, I went out of protocol and, and lit before we went on air here. And my reaction was like to use, to use a word often cited by, by Bam Bam. It was orgasmic. In, in that it was <laughs> getting looks like is he talking? Oh, because it's the most mellow orgasm I've ever seen. <laughs> but you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me moan. I didn't hear you moaning. You didn't hear me moan. Oh, I, hear moan. Oh, I was moaning. Okay. But I, I would say it's very different from anything I've ever tasted before. I truly believe that. It's very like I can't compare it to a cigar I've ever had. Well, yeah, these are these are 2015 cigars. There's not a lot of Cubans that come in a Maduro wrapper. There's only a few of them. So I know that the Maduro in Cuba is a rare wrapper, probably which drives its, its scarcity, but um, it's such a delicious stick. And I think for Partagas, it's very different than anything else that they do. I mean, you can kind of draw a line through their other cigars, I would, I would say, but I think this is very different. Very deep, complex. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little bit of sweetness to it, too. A little bit of like maybe raisin or nuttiness. Uh, a lot of coke, a little bit of cocoa, cocoa. flavor. But definitely, mm -hmm. a, and the burn is fantastic. Is. And the draw is great, too. Oh, awesome. yeah. Yeah. Great combustion. This is a phenomenal cigar. I mean, it, it's not only different than anything Partagas does, it's different than anything Cuba does, right? I mean, there, as far as I know, there's only two Cuban Maduros, the Partagas Maduro, and I think Cohiba makes a Maduro. Mm, Cohiba, yeah. genius. That's really it. And I think this is one of the few examples of the old world in Cuba doing justice to the new world in a way that we really like and are used to um, a lot of, you know, almost padrone or davidoff like flavors in a cuban cigar which to me is really you know interesting i remember the first time i lit this up we were at another cigar lounge special place special place and um similar to grinder's reaction of having an orgasm on the light i'm sitting there in my chair with a huge smile on my face lighting this cigar up and bam immediately says to me what the hell did you just light up and it was this cigar now i probably shouldn't have told bam what i lit up because he bought out <laughs> All Every of one these cigars. So uh, absolutely, that was not uh, cool. The day after, thankfully, he's sharing today. Yeah, we, right we, we are witnessing yes. the, the fruits of the, his his labor right now. It's true, but now fruits we can't of my find greed. Anymore. <laughs> but he had to be pursued to share. Look at this burn, guys. Uh, That's uh, we phenomenal. Had to, uh, phenomenal lizard burn. drama. We had to kind of, uh, you know, break his it hand. Was, wasn't a wasn't easy, but we got it done. But I bet he still has some more left. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. He definitely counted low on. He missed a couple when he was yeah. counting how many he had. You can all come downstairs tomorrow. He probably got 140, not 14. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Cool, but what were we going to say? Uh, it's, it's dark chocolate. Yes. Yeah. I it's, mean, I, I, I know that's kind of like. That's what I'm getting, Puba. What you'd stereotypically say about a Maduro, but it's, it really tastes like one of those Giardelli. Uh, uh, chocolate bars, dark chocolate bars you pull out of a hotel. It's more like a bar. Bouchard. The Bouchard I used to Bouchard eat. Bouchard chocolate. <laughs> I love the Bouchard. <laughs> I used to eat 
uh, chocolate with cigars all the time, and what the guys it, used to bust my balls. What, what's it called? But it's then the Bouchard. price went up by Cho- two dollars. Chocolate, chocolate. <laughs> that's when uh, Grinder said that uh, I had a primitive palate, and that's where primitive palate came from. Was I, my, I think that came from your scotch. I was going to say first. no, but it started with the chocolate, and then that same time was when I didn't like the. Was it Lafroy or? So, uh, so when I made when I made that comment, Lager though, Bullen? I was not referencing your chocolate. It was the scotch know, proclivity for chocolate consumption during cigar tastings. It was just on your reaction to a wonderful Elay scotch that I was kind of perturbed I mean, by. The stuff that tastes like I don't that's love the, the stuff that tastes like the grass trimmings. Yeah, mm, no, it tastes like it tastes like ethyl alcohol. It tastes like high test gasoline. <laughs> yeah, it tastes yeah, no, it tastes like medicine, cough syrup. No, so the one we were we tried. One of my one, well, I like Eli Scotch, but and Petey Scotch, but we tried Calila. That was it. Traditional, like their their it. their marquee Cal, Calila, which I like a lot. <clears throat> but then you know my my Scotch tasting is more around Petey Lagavulin, which to me the Lagavulin is the smoothest of all the Petey Scotches, the sixteen year, and you were like shitting on the sixteen year. And I was. I like, wasn't shitting is- on it. I just don't love <clears throat> scotch. Yeah. Well, that's when I was like, "You, we well, got to You got to refine your palate. It's primitive." So, so uh, try the Talisker. I think it's. Sm- I, it's a I'm way into PD the. Uh, I'm way into the Lagavulin now. There's no question about that. Yeah. I, I really like the Lagavulin, mm-hmm. but um, some of the other stuff's a little too peaty. Then I got you a bottle for your birthday. Yes, you did, <laughs> and I pounded it. <laughs> we'll just get you some Dalwini and some Kirkland. Oh. You can, you I do pound, love the Kirkland you can, Scotch. You can pound that. I have it with me tonight. Kirkland 12 year blend. Excellent. It's fantastic. It's actually, Very good. it's actually that's value listen, for money. It's that's not like $35 terrible. for a, a, a 1.75 liter. I Look, mean, if you're like out on the boat, it's great. We need to get that guy, <laughs> that guy who like blended all those Costco yeah. scotches. I think it's a secret. Alex, Alexander something. And like, it's just, t- just like pick his uh-huh. brain because we, how, we he, how he's able to, to get a scotch to get a, a scotch at discount price, at some of the absurd prices we've seen for scotches, at a, like a high quality scotch, he's doing something in the blending, obviously, that is, you know, it's, he's a professional, clearly. Well, Maybe but, he's aging it in Tupperware. Mm. Well, it blows away, like, not that this is saying much, but it blows away like a Johnny Walker Red oh. or something <laughs> awful <black>. like that. <clears throat> I, I maybe even the black, I mean, maybe I even definitely. the black, but I kind of have a thing for maybe because... I drank Johnny Walker Black when, before single malt was single malt scotch was cool. Before, before you know drinking saying? black was cool. Well, before, yeah, well, no, bef- there you was a time when single malt scotch really wasn't like a yeah. thing. Right? That's yeah. it. No, it's blend. It's all, a blend. All of yeah. Johnny Walker's scotch it's, are it's blends. blends. That's right. Yeah. Even the that's blue. Right. Same with Chivas. Even, even the blue. Even the blue. Even the blue. Yeah, every blue. single thing every they make is a blend. Johnny Walker. That's right. Got it. Which so doesn't make it a bad scotch. No. No. How are you guys feeling about the cigar right now? Everybody's well, about a third I, I of the I think way as in. we're talking about right now, sort of pairings with a cigar, this is perfect for an after-dinner smoke. No I doubt. Mean, that, that was like no doubt. a restaurant-quality meal that Grinder prepared. I can't think of a better cigar to have after a meal like that. We've all got a scotch, a beer, something with us right now. I mean, this is, I feel like, the perfect exclamation point. I think it goes well with this Meritson. It's like Oktoberfest, dark amber, but still kind of light and sweet. It beer. does, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Something sweet, something sweet would go well with this, like a four square chocolate Barbados rum oh, type yeah. thing. Yeah, would go great, like a high test rum that's sweet. That four square rum is really good. I got to bring some um, something like that would mm-hmm. pair nicely. You know, after dinner. By no means, though, would I consider this to be a dessert cigar. This I could smoke. This isn't this isn't all the time cigar. I would I would consume this. Absolutely. Just well, look I, at the burn line on I'm this. Sure. Yeah. It's so razor sharp. Well, right. it's just it's good. Yeah. I mean it's it's and and the interesting thing that I've seen just on Facebook groups on on Red Online, it's it's actually not, believe it or not, it, it's not universally loved. Really? Um, it's not. I've seen dissenters on this hmm. um, in a number of places. Now, maybe, maybe. Cuban traditionalists. Was, well, that, that, could yeah, be. that could be. That's a good call. That could be. 
or they were they were the, were the only ones that we've had are aged these 2015 i think unless i don't want to speak for the group is some of these cigars that have laid down for six years mm. and maybe maybe younger it doesn't smoke um quite could as be. impressively maybe it does need some time could be i, I don't be, know i'm speculating i'd be interested to understand how they market this because habanos markets cigars to specific regions market brands market cigars to, and then they have the regionals i'm wondering where this fits in that. so what region. i saw about this global? cigar what i saw about the cigar is that as a retailer obviously we get all our stuff on the gray market or through resellers but for, for the first retail point it has to be what they call a habano specialist which is not a la casa del habano like they get all the limitados and the regionals and stuff i guess the the distributors you know work with them on the on the regionals but the limitadas go there first, but these are for a Habano specialist. So I don't know if that's the top certain percentage of, you know, uh, Habano dealers. I don't know how it works, but these don't go to every single retailer. Hmm. I mean, I'm not surprised to hear what Poob is saying that <clears throat> this cigar can be polarizing because I, I feel like obviously they don't distribute in the U.S., but this is a cigar that's made for the U.S. market where we smoke. A lot of Dominican and Nicaraguan yep. cigars with all these question. other countries. Right. Great point. This is the complete opposite of the traditional Cuban profile. So that's exactly right. And, and like you said before, I think this is definitely the closest to what I would call a Cuban Padron or a Cuban Davidoff. Oh yeah, Nicaraguan that I've so smoked. From the point of view of the flavor profile, yes, totally agree. Yeah, but it does something interesting. It kind of gives you the it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You're kind of getting this Maduro wrapper, which delivers this kind of like punchy, chocolatey, um, I guess, poke, if you want to call it. And then it gives you that, it gives you the filler on the inside that that certainly is tastes Cuban, right? The, the so aroma. you're kind of getting a little bit of every, a little bit of a hybrid. The aroma from the from Taste. us smoking, you know, six of these cigars right now is phenomenal. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Yeah. It is. It's, it's like we're in a chocolate factory. Yeah, it's really. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by the, the smoke output on this. I mean, it's, it is Great like combustion. a Padron. It's yeah. like a Padron. The thing I like most about this cigar, there are a lot of cigars I feel like that we've tried that we would say are s sweet in sort of flavor profile. And a lot of those I call dessert cigars. I mean, we'll probably talk about this at some point. The Padron Black Label, that's like a dessert chocolate bomb of a cigar that I would really only have in a dessert setting. What amazes me about this cigar is as much as there's the sweetness from the Maduro wrapper, it's versatile. Totally. I could enjoy this in the afternoon. That's what I, I can enjoy yep. this after dinner. I made the same comment a moment ago. Yeah. It's enjoy it anytime. Something special. Yeah. What's yeah. funny about you saying the Padron 100, and not to parlay into a Padron discussion, but the first time I had this was uh, Rooster and I were in Miami uh, separately, but we met up for a day and had some cigars. We went to Padron. Uh, you, we'll tell that story later. Got to meet Jorge Padron, but ended up getting a couple boxes of the Padron 100, which are the little torpedoes they only sell at Padron HQ in Miami. And uh, Rooster and I went to a cigar bar, and the first cigar he gave me there was the first time I had this Maduro number one. And then I went into the Padron 100, and it was just a phenomenal, you know, one two punch of a day cigar wise. Um, unquestionably, but this is the second time I'm having a cigar and it's just phenomenal. Phenomenal cigar. I talked about how the only other brand that has made a Cuban Maduro is Cohiba. I am just stunned. When this cigar came out, I think it's no secret, Partagas is my favorite Cuban brand, period. When this came out, I was skeptical and didn't buy this for a few years because I said, there's no way Partagas mm -hmm. knows how to make a Maduro. I mean, that's just not in Cuba's repertoire. That's not what they do. And I can't believe, it, it's almost like Partagas can do no wrong that I, I legitimately can't think of a single line within Partagas that I've tried that I actually thought was a subpar cigar I didn't enjoy. Everything they do somehow, I feel like produces greatness, and which just strengthens how much I love Maybe that, that goes back to what Puba was saying when this was disparaged by a lot of people. Maybe there's that misconception look Cuba doesn't do a good Maduro. Yeah, or it just doesn't agree yeah. with with it's a it's it's a <clears throat> you could argue that it's um, that the flavor profile is a little bit of a departure from what a traditional Cuban cigar may taste like. 
um, and maybe that's, or maybe it goes back to the age that maybe people were smoking these and they needed time. You see, I don't, and which I can't answer. I'm just hypothesizing. Yeah, yeah. But so it's, there are it's three good. three sizes of this. Mm, is blend. that right? Yeah. There's also there's a Maduro one, Maduro number two, and also a Maduro number three. What is, which what's is two a and three? Short, it's a short torpedo. <clears throat> mm. Number three. Yeah. What's number two? Number two is a little shorter than this. Ah. Have you had any of the other ones? Because I think Rooster I've was had, the first one to try this cigar. Yeah, I've had Did you the, have the one? Or yeah, I've one? had the one and the two. They're both very similar, but I think this one is a little bit better. I have not had the uh, the petite uh, pyramid, cool. for lack of a better word. I um, wonder how it uh, you know varies with this, but this is definitely uh, the best. I'll be honest. I think this pairs... Like with the smoked meat flavor that we had. Oh yeah, I'm getting like this is like a second course of smoke smoked meat in my <laughs> mouth. Like, it's like a second meal, but yeah. it's not overwhelming though. It's just it's it's delicious, satisfying. That's the thing. It's perfectly it's, balanced it's as so, far as I'm concerned. It is so fucking good. Oh, it's right, it's right bizarre because we I'm I'm talking about yeah. the smoked meat flavor, but we're also talking about chocolate and cream mm. and you know all this other balance here. Yeah. Do you guys taste a little sweetness? Yeah, a bit. Oh, oh yeah. Starting to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm I mean, that's going to be the Maduro wrapper. Yeah, the Very oils good. heat up and start to. Both Puba it's and better. It's better. It's, I'm right in the middle. In the L- Look at you two guys with the ash. Wow. Get a, somebody get a photo of that. <laughs> I clicked one. It was, uh, it's, you know. It's there's a lot, there's a lot going good. on I'd, today. I'd buy a yeah. box of these. With the barbecue, with this awesome stick. We got tennis on. We got the football. We got the Giants playing Denver. Thank God football's back, man. Thank Amen. God. Thank God football's back. We have about, what, 20, 25 weeks now of football to look forward to? Oh, yeah. We got an extra week this season. I know. Uh, That's 17. right. Yep. Thank God. Yeah, and I think Djokovic is ready to break another racket. How does he get? Uh, can, down, can somebody explain to me? I'm, I'm not a tennis guy. How does he get away <clears throat> with being so a twat? He's the number one player in the world. No, but how does he get away with smashing a racket? He'll get a point taken for the next time he does something like that, and then I think it's either the sec two points or a game disqualification. Wow. Yeah, Listen, but I'm, he's I'm, smart enough where that really never I'm happens. Cool. And if you look at what happened in the Olympics, I mean, he's so clever. He smashed a racket during the match he lost where he was ousted from the Olympic tournament <laughs> and then waited until he lost the match and then smashed another racket along this pole holding up the net. And at that point, the match is already over. Right. I mean, I, I just, to me, he's got a lack of respect for a sport that's given him everything he has in his life, which is disappointing to me. Mm-hmm. I, I Also, I mean, I, I don't want to sympathize with the guy because I can't sympathize on this level, but that, you know, when you're that good, at something and you're that driven, you kind of have to have a little bit of a dick in you to like just be so exceptional. And to get there. And to get there and to be like completely singularly focused on one thing. And it can also be somewhat narcissistic in a way, but that's his whole, that's any kind of deviation from perfection in that arena is unacceptable for him. And that's got him to where he is. But I'm not saying it's a good thing to break a racket and ask like an act like an asshole, but at the but same you time, see it, you, you, we see this in other athletes yeah, that you, are awesome. <laughs> you do. I mean, look, you see it. You see it throughout sports, and particularly in individual sports. It can, in golf, um, I was never a big fan of um, of of Tiger Woods dropping f bombs on the mic or or <clears> smashing <throat> golf clubs. You know, he was he he did that more often than he should have, particularly early on in his yeah. career. But there's, um, there's and, also... And, and, but it's something that... Look, it's Ben Stiller. Look, they're role um, models. I mean, they got to... You know, kids look up to these guys, and, you know, they would think that that's the norm. What did yeah. Barkley... break a racket like what that. What did Barkley say? If, say if things don't go your way. What did, what did Charles Barkley say? Oh. I am not a role model. That's yeah, I mean, Charles look, Bar- I'll, I'll say this. I, I think athletes obviously are... Are, are viewed as role models. And I understand all that. You know, I, I, if I were a tennis, a professional tennis player at this level, sure. I've got a temper. I can see myself breaking a racket here and there. 
what kills me is you have to have some self-awareness to at least recognize if you're going to be a role model and say, what I'm doing is not okay and not to be emulated. And what kills me is when you watch interviews with Djokovic and they ask him about this. He doesn't acknowledge. Do you think this is a problem? And he says, what problem? And he sees absolutely nothing wrong with it. And this is a guy who two years ago got disqualified from the entire U.S. Open from during a match hitting a ball at a chair umpire in frustration. This time around, he almost hit oh. one of the little ball kids standing there on the side. You <laughs> have to be self-aware enough to say what I'm doing is not acceptable. I, I obviously let my emotions get the best of me. And everybody makes mistakes. But it's the fact that he doesn't see anything wrong with how he's behaving. Yeah. Yeah. That's more the part I have an issue with. It's a lack of introspection. You know, you make a mistake and you take responsibility for it. That goes right. a long way. Right. I, I, I'll say it again. It's narcissism. If you're that self self selfish self focused you have no conception of how others view you right and you don't care and you don't, right and you don't <laughs> care. i mean everything i've seen he certainly seems like he doesn't care and when this med, the, the med, this about, medvedev is no saint either no no but you, you know, know this guy's you know he's got he's I got think the, you're bi- he's, he's got because he's, he's got, russian yeah he's got the microfilm <laughs> in the in the handle of his racket the microfiche <laughs> <laughs> ready to take the intelligence back to the honda mother country I'll say this. I've the, never the, the been difference. a Medvedev fan. And, and to Pooper's Bridge of point, spies. I mean, yeah. this, this is a guy who was egging on the crowd at the U.S. Open two years ago when they were booing him and saying he likes to be the villain and he was happy to play that role. Right. But I feel like there's a maturity process with him where he's learned how to conduct himself. And I mean, these right. guys know I was at the U.S. Open's, uh, the U.S. Open women's final yesterday and was lucky enough to meet uh, Medvedev and he was actually a really nice, gracious guy, taking selfies with kids, yeah. you know, fist bumping, just uh, just seemed like a nice guy. We were even, Grinder and I were watching, I guess it was probably the semifinals uh, in, in the lounge here. And um, they did a long interview with him. And both of us kind of looked at each other and said, wow, he, yeah. he's oddly I, likable. It was almost, it was almost <laughs> off-putting. Like, yeah. like my, this, this image of this, like, Russian douchebag yeah. was just completely obliterated. I, I, I was like, yeah, I could have a beer with that guy. I see, exactly. I yeah. saw the interview um, and I was like, he's really coming off really quite well, yeah. actually introspective. Right. Um, and was coming off quite well, but you know, it just could be the KGB training. And, and <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> he's, he's, uh, <laughs> you know, now, now he can comp- completely slip undetected into the American embassy and load up a USB drive. Because <laughs> he's so nice now. <laughs> Send the yeah. cease and desist directly to Pooba, please. <laughs> it's something out of Burn After Reading. Did you ever see that movie? <laughs> great movie. That's a great movie. That's such a fucking good, it's so good. <laughs> We're watching the US Open and uh, Brad Pitt is in the stands and it was just making me think of that. Okay. He's sitting next to What him. a great role he played there. Like completely different from anything else he's ever done in his life. Well, I think it's funny he's sitting next to Bradley Cooper. They're it's buddies. Like the, the, the damage that those guys could do on the town. Turn you know, together. Forget but they're, it. They're, they're like, Bradley Cooper got Brad Pitt, like, got his life back on, on track. What do you mean? Is I don't know. Really what happened to his life? Like Brad, Pitt? Brad was like, go, like spiraling with the alcohol and the drinking and the yeah. smoking weed. And like the kids were taken away. And then he like had a, he had like a come to Jesus moment where Bradley Cooper reached out to him. He's like, you know, let me show you the way. And like, I don't know how much of a saint Bradley Cooper is. He's a Georgetown alum, mad respect, Hoya Saxa. But at the same time, you know, he just kind of took, he's like, you don't have to do this. And they became best friends. How, and how they do hang you, out. How with do each you other. know this this shit? I'm People I, Mag. I, I'll, be, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know. <laughs> TMZ. Uh, Georgetown. Those, those, yeah, those Georgetown boys. They stick together like glue. <laughs> it's interesting, though. I had no idea they were even friends until today. Either. Listen, I yeah. just wanted I Bradley idea. Cooper and Lady Gaga to like get it Cause, together. Because Brad Cooper is. Completely sober. Oh, look he's, who's in a Bradley Cooper is a, he doesn't drink, he doesn't oh. do drugs. Oh, really? He's like, a, he does yoga like 95% of the day. He's like, what? Yeah. He's That's like, a he's, like a, always, he's like a guru. Is this always the case or this was like he changed kind of his? I don't know when, when this <clears throat> happened in his life. But yoga all day. Well, I don't know if he does yoga all day. I, I hope he at least saves <laughs> time for cigars. 
we, we can See, only I hope. worry about people like that. You know, if you have to do yoga all day to just stay sane from like, just take a Lexapro or something and move on with your life. <laughs> You're going to do yoga all day. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. <laughs> have a scotch, take a load off. Yoga he, he doesn't all day. drink. You can't do the scotch. You can't do it. Huh? He's got can't a do the scotch. Yeah, a I think man. I think he had a metanoia, <laughs> as it what were. What the fuck is that? I think he. I think he had. I think Bradley Cooper was like and was ready. Was ready for rock bottom, and then he changed his life around, and now he's like spreading the love and like passing yeah. it forward. Gotcha. Gotcha. <clears throat> so let's go back to the uh, part against Maduro one for a second. Where's everybody at on it? I'm. I know for me, I'm getting a lot of the aged. Tobacco now, kind of wrapped in cho- uh, chocolate. But what are you guys getting? Oh, it's a great cigar. It's just it's continuing on. I'm, uh, it's it hasn't really changed up or done anything. Yeah, if anything, a, it's smoothed out for me. It's a good point. It's a pretty consistent flavor. My my retro, but it's hell. satisfying all the way through. Very smooth, and and smooth. It has gotten smoother. Yeah, full but smooth and flavorful. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a lot of retro hair right now on this guy, and it's it's picked up in spice on the nose for sure. Hmm. It was a little subtle at, to, in the beginning. You know, I, yeah, a little I'm cinnamon through you. there. Yeah, I'm with you. That that's what as I'm midway through this cigar, I'm getting a little cinnamon or spice, which is a nice way to I feel like mix up the flavors a little bit. It's not all just one note all the uh, way through. So it's a two act cigar. I think so far, yeah. yes. But, but mm. you know, I, I guess this is where how I my definition of a one act versus a two or three act cigar is maybe a little bit different. When I say a two or three act cigar, I don't mean that the flavor isn't changing slightly while you're smoking it. I mean three, two or three distinct acts where I've lit up a Lusitania before and I, I couldn't believe the first third. This is the only cigar I'll ever say this about. You'll think I'm insane. I couldn't believe as I was smoking it, but legitimately got peach notes. I've never had that in a cigar. The second act of that Lusitania was nothing like that whatsoever. And the third act was completely distinct. So with this cigar, I don't even know that I'd call it two act. And I'm, I'm the guy who, who said I like consistency in a cigar. I just think the flavors are, are sort of melding together and doing some interesting things, but not fundamentally changing right. where I'm just getting a little bit more spice. I think really as the cigar's heating up more as They're I'm more smoking enhanced. it. Right. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. It's an enhancement as you right. go through it. Yeah. But it's, it's building. Yeah, it's still a single act, though, if you want to call it that. Yeah. But yeah. It is Which enhancing. I like. Yeah, but I see oh, this. I, I got to tell you, I see this like um, that like little bit of like baking spice coming through here at the end, but it's spicy. It's getting spicier. Right. And, and uh, this feels very much not a middle of the summer cigar. I, uh-huh. I, want, I, like, I feel like by the fire, by the, you know, yes. in the winter time. By the hearth. By the hearth, yes. With Great. The, and the tap. And Great the ta- description. You know. I like that. Like, uh, you, got, you know, if we were up at the hotel uh, or up, if I was up on the farm with the guys outside and, you know, after a hunt, after a shoot, after a, in your, or whatever, whatever you're doing outside after a hike, or something and you're sitting outside by a fire just in your backyard this in its autumn yeah 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 so i i agree with all that the only thing i'd add though i, I think this cigar even in the summer after a big meal like yep. a steak sure I it also this works cigar. if i'm having sure. a glass of cab or a scotch it also works sure, yeah. with this cigar after a nice steak dinner it's that solid no th- no doubt it's it, yes for sure it's um can't wait for the rankings on this bad boy <laughs> retail these these are about like if you get it direct from a retailer not the 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 green you know not the private sellers like we do but these are somewhere between 20 and 22 bucks a stick and what did you pay for these 25 let me check again i think they were 20 it's, it's 25 yeah, yeah the, 25. you know it, that's not bad. It, that's not bad. For a cigar this distinctive that's not terrible. Yeah, and i mean I, i'm going to compare this cigar to a davidoff in mm. flavor profile, right? I mean, a Padron as well. But I, I think like the construction on this is beautiful. The burn, uh, to me, for whatever reason, I guess, especially because it's not box press, which is really all I think of a Padron. Yep. But if I had to compare to something, I'd say a Davidoff. And you look at a Millennium. I oh, mean, you if know. you're buying a Millennium Toro or a Pyramid, you're paying $25, $28 a stick. Right. Oh. So to yeah. me, 20 
to 25 bucks is for actually this? very fair for this cigar. Absolutely, because it's so satisfying. Right. And you do get the coat. The, so for the Millennium, I get coffee, roasted coffee. I get that here, but it, there's a more of a chocolate note, right? Cocoa. Big time. In addition to that. Big time. And then you're describing some baking spices as you go through it. It's, it's quite the stick. Big time. It's a touchdown. Is it? Yeah. You know, Djokovic's really getting his ass kicked. <laughs> this is wonderful. It's fantastic. <laughs> this is a, he's getting it handed to him. It's for, not for he's love. Getting, wow. it's a blowout. I, I told him yesterday he could win this match. Squarely. Straight, straight he just needed that extra boost. You Senator straight sets. came through. Oh, did you really? Straight sets. That's <laughs> you, you know. I said to him, good luck tomorrow. You can beat him. That's exactly what I said. That's awesome. Senator went to the semifinals? Was no, it? a women's final. Women's final yesterday. What a great, what a great match that, that was. was. A great match. Yeah. That was awesome. You know, it's funny with the cigar. I'm kind of getting that that thing where it like co- coats the roof of your mouth. Mm. Oh, I was just gonna say, there's really like nice as way. Michael Scott, there's like an afterbirth. He, as Michael would say, <laughs> there's an afterbirth of spice <laughs> that I that I feel like is going to like linger <laughs> on to my next it's, cigar. But it's like a nice smooth like it coating is. on the roof of your mouth. I'm yeah. really like <laughs> great aftertaste <clears throat> on this. Guy. Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> After birth, so uh, the office is um, the office is like just running the seasons back to back to back on Comedy Central, like incessantly. So I and I work. I, we all a lot of us work from home now. So I will literally just sit on my couch and have the office in the background all day as <laughs> I'm fucking, you know, slamming on PowerPoint <laughs> slides and you know just crushing models and stuff. Right, right. and it's great. Yeah. That's my story. Pooba, do you yeah. focus more when you're on on PowerPoint? I know that you and Grinder have. Uh, yeah, it have seems pen, like it seems like Grinder has a bit of a focus problem when he's in PowerPoint. Pending when I match. when no, I no, do no. when I do PowerPoint, I have on Coltrane the entire time. Oh. I listen to John Coltrane over and over. That's and interesting because because I, I, I jazz over all the entire fucking time. Because I'm I'm like a Billy Holiday. Slash sure. Miles Davis guy. I can do that too. Yeah. yeah. I can throw the, the, the mix on. I'll be seeing you. Yeah. 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 It's got a little intimate there. Um, love that song. But, um, but in all seriousness, Puba, can you just explain to me why you're qualified to go head to head with me on PowerPoint? Oh my god! <laughs> Come on, that's a whole another podcast. That's a whole no, I, well, I'd like to. I'd like to start setting that up because we well, have to, we're going to do a competition. Yeah, let's for set sure. a date for that. We got to set a date because look, it's it's from many years um, of uh, of uh, working and honing the, honing my skill. It's just lots of slide decks. I mean, um, I don't know what else to say. Trial and error. I had access. You, you know, to, you know your you know your old school when you still call it a slide deck. Uh, okay, why is that? Because that's when slide decks were actually like printed out, and they used to have sectional dividers on the big like two hundred page report, um, and there'd be different decks of the yeah of the so, report. So I'll tell you how old school I am on nine eleven. Okay, I got to, this is a 9-11 story. On 9-11, uh, um, whatever I am, you know, 26 years old or however old I am, working in the city. And uh, the, the second tower goes down. And at that point, I'm like, this is lunacy. I can't get through to any of my friends. I go down to the bodega and I buy a couple of beers, like a couple of tall boys, and I bring them back up because people were like fainting in the office. We don't have to go down this whole vortex, but there were people actually literally passing out. Like when we watched it happen live on, in a conference room, like a couple people actually like collapsed. Wow. You know what I mean? Because they were so, because they knew it was just this, it was over. So um, I was so stressed out. I went and I, I, I bought two tall boys and just brought them to my desk. And back in, in the day, this was drinking in an office was not unusual. And at this particular period of time, concerning it was World War III, it didn't matter. And especially, I the, especially on Madison Avenue. Yeah, exactly. And I opened, up the, <laughs> I opened up my computer and I had an email from a client asking if, now this is at around 11 o'clock, and 11 a.m., asking when, if they were going to get the transparencies 
<laughs> so back in the day, but there were people you didn't project from a computer yeah, through yeah. a you you, you had we we printed off transparencies and then we would send the transparencies out of the presentation to the customer. When am I? Are we getting our transparencies tomorrow? And I wrote back. I'll never forget. I wrote back to this customer and I said, "I'm really sorry, but in case you haven't noticed, it's World War III, and we're not going to be able to fulfill that request. Stay safe. You know, best regards." It's like that's it. So people were actually in, I think, a little bit out of touch out of exactly what was happening. If you, if you if you weren't there. So anyway, back. So my PowerPoint goes back to the days of. The transparency, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a long time ago. You have to roll in. You have to roll in the uh, the little cart. Yeah, the little cart. Yeah, you put the transparency. Turn the lights down. Turn the lights down and put the trans <laughs> and switch slides. Let's by get let's get let's get comfortable with each other. <laughs> let's get set the mood. That's right. This has been a long time lizard uh, discussion argument. I guess whatever word you want to use between Grinder and Puba of who is the superior PowerPoint uh, master. I guess. Yeah. And we're going to decide. We're going to, yeah, we're going to find a way to decide. Maybe we're just I can make a portfolio, you know. Well, I, I think we need a challenge and then you need to like judge the, judge it on certain criteria. Okay. Right. You need Senator like had a story. Good idea for that. You need analytics. You need, you know, concision, which is important. Sure. And then obviously aesthetics. Does it look nice? Yeah. Well, I, I think, I think I can be competitive. All right. Well, we all need roles here, and I think uh, Grinders already established himself as the the lizard pitmaster. So that's for sure. Nice. I, I'm oh, hoping yeah. uh, I'm hoping Puba pulls this one out as the uh, PowerPoint master. <laughs> <laughs> Puba, the PowerPoint. <laughs> Never know when you'll need a deck. <laughs> yeah, you made. Hey, look, you never know. Can can, can come in handy. Oh, who is that? Yeah, look at that. That was some sort of Eastern block. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> female <laughs> another microfiche carrier maybe <laughs> she's got microfiche all right so are you guys ready to do a rating I lizard am. In rating the, into the mic into the mic sir i'm in the mic okay. lizard rating zero through ten a whole number that we're going to average we're going to get a lizard average uh, and then decide if it's a recommend or a pass on the cigar so, rooster what do you think what's your number i would say a solid nine Ooh. Wow. Because nine is nine is. Yeah, no, hold on. Nine. Let's not justify not, it. I don't want to sway these ratings. Let's go agreed. all around, then we can talk. Yeah, we'll totally agree. All right, nine. Rooster can nine. I, can I just explain that? No, 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 no. no. Nope. After, after. We're we don't come want to right back. Okay. Rating. All right. So, Rooster nine, Puba. This particular 2015, and in this size, I give it a nine. Whoa. Wow. I am also giving it a nine. Wow. I can't believe this. I'm also a nine. What? Grinder. I, I hate I hate not whole, like not half numbers. I'm gonna do. Oh, I'm gonna give it an eight. Okay, bam, that's bam. exactly where I'm at. Eight. I'm at eight. Okay. As much as I love this cigar, it's I'm at an eight. Rooster, why a nine? Well, I think it's it's a fantastic cigar. I mean, it's not a ten, and it's not an eight. So to me, a 10 would be like a Robaina Classico, Fundador. That's a 10 to me. This Padron is a, 80th is a 10. Padron 80th is a 10, most definitely. This does satisfy at multiple levels. Hits all the notes. I mean, it's, yeah, it's fantastic smoke. But there are some cigars that are maybe this with more age. I mean, I'm talking about the... Classicos from like 2001 or even 2011. Mm. So when this is about that old, maybe it will be a 10. But right, be. right now, this cigar to me is a solid, solid nine. So what's that, the average? Is what that's eight seven five or something? Eight, eight seven. Eight seven. Puba, so, why a nine? Um, I just really like it. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it look for me. I don't, it delivered on a lot of different things: the the burn, the combustion, the construction of it, the taste. Uh, it's it's different um, in a great way. 
um, it's differentiated from anything else, Partagas. And, um, and it gives that Maduro wrapper, I think, makes a big difference. It's really, really, it's all those notes we talked about, which I don't have to, you know, restate, that resonate with me. I, I would buy a box of these cigars. I would buy a box of them, you know. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't smoke them every day. But um, it wouldn't be like something in my everyday rotation necessarily. But I think it would be in a lot of good spots. I w- it, it wouldn't, box wouldn't sit. No. I mean, but I, I'd go through it. Yep. But, but I want, I'd like, I'd like a box of these. It's got, I'm, can I just say, I'm getting like sawdust. No grass or hay? No. Yeah, none, getting, of, <laughs> none of that for me, bro. I'm getting sawdust right now. No. Grinders excommunicated. No, I, I like saw. Who doesn't like the smell? That of sounds sawdust? like a COVID palette. Who doesn't like the smell of sawdust? Yeah. What? <clears throat> like me, when you go when you when you're like cutting wood like with a ch- with a chop saw, that's what I'm smelling. That's what I'm getting right I've now. I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> Who has a guy? <laughs> it's got a he's got a guy to can, chop can his I wood. Can I explain my rating? Yeah. This uh, so this is a nine for me because it, to me it's the perfect um, blend of what I love in a Padron or that kind of you know, Nicaraguan dark wrapper Maduro and what I love in a Cuban, specifically Partagas, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like, it's like those two had a baby and this is what, what happened. It's fantastic. I like, like Puba said, I, I, to me, I would, I wouldn't smoke these every day, but if I had a box of these, it'd probably last me a year, you know? Oh, it wouldn't. Oh, last not me. me. Not me. Not me. I'd smoke maybe one every couple weeks other day. <laughs> I think I'd go through it a little faster than that. Absolutely. But, yeah. Senator. 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 So I don't disagree with much of what's been said. For me, this is like a, a Cuban Padron, which I love. Full flavor, um, fairly complex, really smooth, just a delicious smoke. The only reason this cigar didn't get a 10 for me is because similar to what some of the other lizards have been saying, I wouldn't smoke more than one of these in a sitting. And I may sound insane, but cigars I will rate a 10 know. <laughs> on this podcast are cigars that I won't smoke one, four. maybe not even two, four. three or four <laughs> I could smoke in a sitting and absolutely love that cigar. And this for me is, I would definitely smoke plenty of these. It would, I, a box would not last a year in my no. humidor, that's for sure. But I'd have one of these maybe every week or two. That's where fair. for other cigars that would get a 10, I mean, they'd be in the rotation and I'd, I'd have a hard time even smoking just one at a time. Grinder? Grinder. Grinder. Yeah. Why an eight? So why an eight? Because I think I, I'm, I'm approaching this from like a what's my grading scale slash rubric. <laughs> what's my rubric? Because I think 10 for me is like, I'm never going to smoke a 10. Like, and I'll, I'm not going to know I smoked a 10 until like I'm like 95 or on my deathbed. I'm like, oh, of all the best cigars, that was the 10. Um, number nine would probably be, you know, those exceptional cigars that I would go out of my way for any, you know, any, anything to have, right? Just to, just to smoke incessantly. Um, or is truly complex and I can truly appreciate it. And even if I can't get my hands on it, I like acknowledge that this is, this is almost there, <laughs> but it's not, it's like really fantastic. I would buy two boxes and I would smoke two boxes in a year. And I would, I have, my enthusiasm is probably the same as for this cigar as, as is yours. Everyone here who rated a nine, but I just, you know, I think my, my grading scale is a little different. That's all. Yeah. It, look, if, if I couldn't give it an eight, because I felt like it was closer to nine than it was to eight. But Grinder, I got a question for you. If you if you say something about Placencia, I'm going to walk out this fucking garage. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to ask something. Right, about I won't say anything. <laughs> say anything. <laughs> now I was going to say you mentioned something. You know, you said about it like a ten cigar, but there doesn't have to be a one cigar that you would rate a ten. There could be many cigars there that are. could be yeah, yeah. that could be tens. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, cigars right. that you love more than anything else. I always use the analogy, right? Like if I'm dying and I have to tell my wife I need one last cigar. I know exactly what I'm asking for. And there are even a few options that you'll have to, to, to find and procure in time for me to smoke. So my point to you is th- there are cigars we know you love that you smoke a lot of, that you enjoy. 
Yeah, I'm just he's curious. What, what is a 10 cigar? And it's cigar. a 10 for you, which is going to be different what? than a 10 for me or anybody else. Right, right. Are you asking the group or? No, grinder? I'm asking a grinder, grinder. about uh, what's his. I think a 10 is, is like, as Booba would say, it's the trifecta. You've got. No, which perf- cigar in particular? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I have a 10. Something that checks all the boxes of things you like. The flavor you like, it's the not, construction it's, it's you the, want. Like, it's the flavor, it's the construction, it's the presentation of the cigar, the construction, obviously. So um, you're saying and, you have and not I would, And I would, say, I would also say the exclusivity. Not saying that this is, this is a very exclusive cigar, hmm. but I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I... So like, are you saying you have well, not I, had a 10 cigar yet? I may have, but I'm saying that, no, that 10 bracket... Is like, for Full me, I, it, it'd be it'd be post hoc, it'd be on my deathbed when I'm reflecting. <laughs> like these are the best cigars I've ever smoked. Okay. Bam bam bam. So I think I, I just want to say I think Bam Bam's rating was the most surprising to me. Yeah, I know. For, not, for I've got a story. You, I've got a whole story. All right, for so this. I wanna, yeah. I'm, I'm interested why you why it you was chose an eight, an eight. Right? It was an eight. It was an eight. Now no citrus. No, no citrus. That's it. <laughs> no no, no. apricot. <laughs> that, was it. that was it. The citrus took me down. So I want to backtrack a bit. You know, I bought this cigar on blind faith. I respect the opinions of everyone in this room. And I actually rely on your opinions. What cigar should I try? Which one shouldn't I try? Senator had this one night. I bought it out of blind faith. And I'm so fucking happy I did that because they're so delicious. Now, this, this cigar could easily be a nine for me. But so could a millennium. But it's not. And you all know how much I love the millennium. When I compare it to the ultimate quality of a cigar, and I've said it in this room just a moment ago, for me, a 10 is the 80th Family Reserve Padron. A 9 is an Exclusivo Padron. That's not Family Reserve. No, I'm sorry. You're right. It's a 26. I can't put this in this exact same league as the Exclusivo. It's a step down. But it, the, the quality of this is incredible, and so is the flavor. It's so delicious. So for me, it's a, it, it could easily be a 9, but it's an 8 just for the fact that I've got the 80th at 10, my ex, an Exclusivo at 9, and this fights with the Millennium between the Exclusivo. All three of these cigars rotate from the point of view of, of a rating for me personally. But if I have to give it a number, I'm giving it an 8 today. So can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. <clears throat> are there, what Cubans would you put at nine? And are there any Cubans you would put at 10? Because you said two non-Cubans. I'm curious where this ranks in other, versus other Cubans you've had. That, yeah, what That's Cuban would you give a nine? What Cuban would you give a 10? The Cuban that we, that Puba introduced us to? The Classico? That, the Robana. You, the that Robana? Robana? That's, yeah. a, that's a fucking 10 all goddamn day long. That's a, that's a 10. No yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, you, it's a good thing we're going to be reviewing that cigar soon yeah. because uh, Rooster yeah. procured some that he's going to gladly I, share. I changed yeah. my mind. <laughs> so, and a Cuban, see, I can't, it's hard to rate a, a Cuban that high because this has such a strong flavor profile. And for me, I pursue that flavor and I love a fuller cigar. And honestly, before I met the Lizards, I wasn't a Cuban guy because of that fact. I assumed the Cubans were all mild. I wouldn't be interested in them, but I learned so much about them. Yeah. The flavor profiles are so complex and subtle, you chase it. And it's through that chase. What, for me, it's what's exciting about Cubans. I, 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 I do wonder, though, sorry to interrupt you, Poo, but I'm curious if you had an amazing D4, would you give that a seven? No. Absolutely not. No. But I'm just asking Bam. I'm, I'd I'm asking see Bam. that a D4 right up there with the Exclusivo, the Millennium, okay, so, and this guy. Okay. They're all fighting for that number nine spot for me personally. They're all, they're all in the, the ring fighting. The Exclusivo, the Millennium, and this guy. And you can put the D4 right along with these. I don't um, think we should compare no doubt. different sticks. The ratings should be based upon just this I, stick. I knew someone was going to say that. I know. So not based upon the other cigars. And, you know, not every cigar is the same. It's so hard. Yeah, but if you're comparing it, it is, to some you, of the you other you cigars. It's what so you would hard. Give a 10. I mean, even your yeah, benchmark for a 10 is to. a fundy and some of these other sticks. Yeah. Right. We, we do have sticks in mind. Yeah. And I but think I, it helps. I, I mean, it's, honestly, it's the more nature. we try, yeah, from the point the of view of perspective, we, it helps a the, lot. The yeah. more we try, the more we've ha- the more we have, the, the the better we understand what really means a spectacular Cuban 
or a spectacular Nicaraguan or Dominican. Yep, exactly so, right. I think it, you know some of these cigars really set the benchmark for yeah. what outside. And you're creating is. you're creating a precedent between these cigars. And in your mind, if we're going to rank them, the number plays a big role depending on the cigar that you have. But this cigar, another five years, it could be. It'll be a ten. For me, it could jump to a nine maybe, or a ten. Maybe even more than five years. I mean, look, I, who I, knows? You know, we don't know. We don't know. Look, I'm going to say, I, I think part of the beauty of the aging process is you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> I think there are some cigars that with age get even more spectacular and reach heights you didn't even know were possible. But right. I think there are other cigars that with age you actually light up and say, this is still a very good cigar, no question. But this isn't anything spectacular like I was expecting. So I'm I'm not necessarily as convinced that this would be a 10. I do think with the amount of flavor this cigar already has, yeah. with the Maduro wrapper, I don't I mean, here's the example I'll use. If we think of a lot of Padron Maduros that we smoke, and those are already aged five years, do I really believe that if I left a Padron 80th or an Exclusivo in my humidor for another five years, that that would be that much dramatically better? No. I honestly don't. So that's where I think some of these already really full-flavored cigars, I'm not sure get that much more impressive with a lot more I think it's more true with Cubans. It depends on the aging, too. Because like Padron, when they talk about aging, it's not like aging in a cabinet or aging in your humidor. It's like aging in Polones. Like mm-hmm. piles of, of right. leaves in a fucking humidifier c- control. Like they're different trying to process. ferment yeah. different cultures and all this kind of shit. As opposed to this is a new, a fresh Cuban, fresh off the farm, maybe a year that you put in your, your cabinet. That aging that you, you know, if you put it in your cabinet, you wait a couple of years is different from. Look, it's a roll. Look, it's, this is a, this is a, maybe we can sum, maybe I can try and sum it up. I, it, it's a, to me, it, it's it, it's it's a role player, you know. It's a role player cigar. It's number got a nine role, ranking is pretty high for a well, role yeah, player. Well, yeah, it is, but it is, but that doesn't mean because there are a lot it's of a cigars. nine. That's true. There are a lot of cigars. Doesn't mean that doesn't Agreed. Agreed. doesn't doesn't mean that it's something. I wouldn't smoke this in my in in. It, let's say I had ten boxes hypothetically or five boxes. Would I put it in? Would I put it in my daily? No. I wouldn't, but would I put it in? The, it's there a spot for this? Definitely. For me, I'd smoke this weekly. At least two a week, I could do with these. Right. No problem. But not daily. No. Right. And I actually Agreed. love Puba's analogy of a role player. I mean, you, you think of it in sports, right? There are some unbelievable role uh, players. You look at Robert Ory for any basketball fans out yep, there. Yep. The guy has more championship rings than most players ever achieve in their entire career. He was a phenomenal role player. Great analogy. And you take nothing away from a guy like that. And I think with this cigar, Great analogy. it doesn't have to be a starter. It doesn't have to be part of the daily rotation. But when you light this thing up, oh, yeah. you know it's going to deliver. It's a special cigar. Yeah, you it's know it's, it's got a spot. Like it's, it's, it, but, but, but I don't think that that's detrimental to what it is. <clears throat> it's, it's something that you put in, you can look forward to, and it's got a spot, and it's got a place. And I, it's got a lot of character. And I think that plays into the reason why that's what it is. Right. It's got a lot of character. It's different. And it's something I think that you, 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 you go, you know what? I'm going to do that today. And maybe that's three times a month. Mm. You know, maybe that's yeah. once a week, but it's not, it's not a daily. No, twice and, a week for me. And I think, you know, with an 8.7 as the lizard rating, I think that's a very fair score. I think that kind of oh, goes great. to everything that the we're Great averaging, saying. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's definitely a, a solid recommend. Eight point oh. seven. That's I think the eight point seven is a perfect score for that cigar. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Look, I just want to be clear. I think that's very yeah. high praise. Yeah. I, I think this is a tough group to please, and you think I, I am thrilled to see because I love this cigar. I, I obviously Bam really loves this cigar. I, I, I want more. You gave it a mate. I want more. Well, I gave you my reasons. That's true. Next time we're trying to source these, I'm going to tell our source that I gave it a nine and Bam gave it an eight. So we know where he's sending it to. <laughs> I know the source. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bam Bam, thank you for hey, the Partagas Maduro ones. Yeah. Love sharing. Grinder, thank you for the brisket and all the food. Thank and you. Uh, guys, nice thank time. you, and we'll see you next time. Nice. Keep smoking. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking. 
email us lounge lizards pod pod lounge lizards pod at gmail.com i uh, really appreciate your time and uh, we'll see you next week <laughs>